welcome everybody. To start with, we're, this meeting's recorded, so everyone be aware of that, that you'll be recorded. Uh, and we'll start with the first item is our approval of our previous minutes from February 22nd, 2024. Everyone's had an opportunity to look at those. Any questions? No approved. I'll second it. I have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Second one is next on our agenda is what we're mostly here for is case 2024-P04, an application filed by Stephen Snyder on behalf of Culver Equities LLC for a site plan review of the Dunes major subdivision. It's commonly known as 1105 South Main and 957 South Main Culver. So who wants to start? So do we have representation from Culver Equities today? Yes, uh, my name is Brooke Chris. I'm in-house counsel for Culver Equities LLC. Uh, we've provided the site plan uh, and documentation in terms of all of the engineering that's uh, been laid out for the project, uh, presented to the town, I think submitted to uh, the town's engineer, and we have our engineer here um, who's uh, ready and willing, able to answer any questions that might come up, uh, and we're uh, open to hearing from the town's engineer on any questions or concerns or uh, modifications that they may have seen from reviewing the plans. Thank you. Since the invitation has been put forth, uh, the town of in the town of Culver has uh, retained the services of Midwestern Engineering. Scott Seipel is here today. Uh, representation. Do you mind commenting on what you've reviewed and some suggestions for the board here? Um, I'll start with sanitary. So, our we were contracted to look at sanitary, water distribution, and storm collection. Um, so I'll start with sanitary. Um, essentially, the overall outlook will function. Uh, most of our comments are related to the requirement to obtain an IDEM construction permit. Um, the, the biggest thing is there's uh, one pipe section um, that is that needs to be modified to meet IAC 327, there's the pipe length that's over 400 feet on eight inch pipe. Uh, the requirement per state code is 400 feet. It's listed at 409 feet. Um, I think that can be rectified with a, a simple manhole shift um, to, to bring that, ele that, that distance down. Um, the, the other thing, the other comments that I have um, are based upon experience that I've had with IDEM. And I think some things could be cleaned up to help that process get through a little quicker or with a little less comment from IDEM. Um, and I can elaborate on those if you'd like, or I can, um, you know, we can go, we can move forward. Um, essentially, if you'd like for me to elaborate on them, I can. Uh, are they in number or are they pretty minimal? Um, it's kind of throughout. Okay. So it's not a, change this one and it's good but it's kind of throughout uh, has has culver equities received these comments prior to this so um yes okay then there probably is no need to enumerate them at okay. this point um i have some in front of me as well um we can continue if you want to I did issue a letter to bob porter with culver yesterday with some of these comments okay. um i'm more than happy to forward that to um to the developer if if the town wishes. Okay. Um, uh, moving on to the, the water system, there was a couple comments um, that were listed on the plans. Uh, in our review letter, uh, February 6th of this year, um, we questioned the purpose of a 10-inch tap on an existing 10-inch main from the town of Culver. Um, our comment was consider reducing, if possible, to an 8-inch tap. Um, the tap was reduced to an eight. However, a qualifying mark note was added to the plan sheet that the reduction was done at our request and the town's request. And should subdivision see reduced pressures in the 
future, it would be the town of Culver's responsibility to rectify that. Um, that comment, in my opinion, I would recommend the town not take on that liability. Um, calculations for what was required for pressures and flow from the water system were requested, and I haven't seen them. If they were submitted, I haven't seen them. So if a 10 inch tap is warranted, then the 10 inch tap is warranted. However, you know, so we just need to see the math. Behind, yeah, we can see the adjustment. Yes, we'd like to know what's warranted inch tap or, because all all lines in the subdivision are eight inch with six inch hydrants, which is what we would expect to see. Um, the other issue is is really a um, it's more of a, a detail issue. The town typically does not require stores connections on their hydrants. There's a note to have the hydrants with stores connections. That's a minor point. Um, I think that can be that could be handled during construction. It's not not something to to hold things up. Uh, let's see. Well, there'll be some metals anyway, right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, the only thing that we are aware of is that those submittals may or may not be seen by the town until after they're installed. Um, we're not aware that the town has a, a hand in submittals review. So, gotcha. uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, other than that, the water system appeared to be adequate um, from, from that standpoint. Um, we just don't want to see the town take on liability that is kind of unfounded at this point. Um, the storm section, um, so for starters, we have never officially uh, issued any formal comments on storm, the storm plan. Um, we've talked with Chris McRae, with uh, John Kimple and Associates about <clears throat> some of the things that were um, included. Um, and what we received back, it doesn't appear that um, the calculations were changed. Um, a few, there's a few things in the plans. There's no emergency routing for either, um, uh, we'll call it watershed within the property. So this just to, I guess I should have said at the outset, this site is a little bit complicated from a storm water aspect. Um, there's a ridge that kind of splits the property into the proposed subdivision into two different watersheds. And then with the development, those existing watersheds are changing to what we would call new watersheds. So comparing pre and post is a little more difficult. I think that the plan is, is fairly thorough in establishing that. So I think they've, they've hit the mark there, um, but there is some issue with emergency routing. Um, I didn't see any that was presented either for the Northern watershed or we'll call it the Southern watershed. Um, and the issue with that is that emergency routing is there to prevent flooding in the big storm, not the design storm, but in the, the, the big storm. We all know that there's bigger storms out there. Um, so I'd like to see, I would recommend that the town require some emergency routing to, to, to push that flood water that may show up from the 500 or the 1,000 year storm away from the proposed structures. Um, or to prevent flooding at the water plant, for example. Um, I think there's some easy fixes that can be done there, um, but that would be up to you know, what, what the town determined. Um, one other item that I noted in the, uh, in the drainage report was uh, the existing wetland that's located um, on the, we'll call it the western side of the property. If I'm reading this correctly, the, the, 100 year storm analysis to that uh, wetland elevation wise is noted to be 743.03 uh, feet. Um, in the post developed scenario, it's about 16 one hundredths higher. So that elevation is increased. Depending on how you look at that, I think the Marshall County's ordinance says you can't increase those elevations. The, the flow to the wetland is, is not increased, but the elevation ends up being less compared, if I'm reading this math correctly. Um, I don't know if someone from, from um, the developer's engineer can comment on that. Maybe they can clear that up while we're here. Um, 
but uh, but those are kind of the highlights. I think with some emergency routing and some questions um, related to that, we may be able to make a positive recommendation to the town to say, you know, we, we feel comfortable with what's shown. Okay. If there's any specific questions I can answer, I can do that or I can attempt or. The hydrant could come up. Fire hydrant could come up. Yeah, it's a stores. It's a. We don't have any in town, so I mean that's that's minimal. Yeah. Well, that's my concern as far as back on the main road as far as fire flow, fire flow. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of providing a summary, <clears throat> and I read through the report that you sent that enumerated some of the some of the recommendations in terms of sanitary, which none of them were glaring, but most of what you're suggesting on sanitary is something that's going to make it almost an easier process or a required process for the item approval. So I going to that's so OK, <clears throat> but what I'm hearing you say is it is a sound design. You were happy with. The majority of it, um, I, I would. Uh, Feel that it's functional. Okay. Yes. That, yeah. Sorry. Happy is a yes. weird expression. Their functional would be much better. Um, in review of the water, um, Burke, you want to comment on the additional comment that was added to the ten inch tap? Was it a miscommunication, or did you think that was something that was required from the town? Uh, what I'm going to do is a, a very structured uh, slide to the side and have the engineers. There you <laughs> go. That's why I figured you were, but. <laughs> Answer the question, and this is on the the water supply, not storm water, right? So correct. This is yeah, that's correct. We're, no. Yeah, transition. So out. Um, on water supply, the, the answer to that eight to ten inch tap. And I'm Colin Hardy with Charlie Football Associates. Um, over the years, CMD developing all these sites, they just you know found out bigger is better as far as the water goes. It it helps the pressure. It helps volumes. And it, or they felt the 10 inch would help supply a little bit more pressure and a little bit more volume. But whether we actually need it or not, we don't know yet. We didn't run water calculations. And their goal is to get as much as they can, and the 10 inch would do that. Well, there's got to be some calculation because at one time you were going to go off that six and you switch to the 10, but the six wasn't enough. So there's got to be something existing. Split off the center. The existing six inch main that we put down south main, you're going to tee off that over by the senior apartments. Oh, um, and was you guys determined it was it, it, it was under you guys determined it was too small. Oh yeah, we knew the six would be too small. And the eight may be adequate, but the 10 inch would be a safety for us. Do you have calculations to say that the eight will be enough? No. Can we get those? Uh, I hope so. I've been working with Aaron Ock, the other engineer that's certifying the water, and he's trying to find somebody that would do those counts. And it has been 15 years since he did it, and he doesn't have the software for it. So we're still looking for somebody to do those counts. I think those calculations will provide us better data. But what I think, and Bob, you can speak towards this better than I can, but we're worried about pulling it off and what it's going to do on a, on a town level. Right. What what what's going to happen to water pressure down the line if we get that calculation? Right. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. If you so need that, an eight, let's use an eight instead of a ten. So the other right. Part. We don't want to oversize randomly or undersize, leaving the the development undersized. What we want is the correct size based upon calculations. Okay. I'll hear here and I'll talk again and see if found anybody yet. And I think the question on is six enough versus eight or ten. Um, Probably not necessarily running a calculation, but historical knowledge that so Alan and the team would know from distance and number. They said six isn't going to be enough. I don't have to run the math. That's, I know that's not enough. So um, I don't know that there was an actual calculation done, but I can agree that bigger no better is not the right answer when we're dealing with the entire town. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's I say, but I got everybody. That's why I say knowing the answer is better than it is. Something of the sort. So, and so. we have to kind of insist on not kind of we have to insist on that. Right. We have to have the data to back the 
That's our Aaron. For those who don't know, Aaron Odd is the city engineer for Warsaw. Mm -hmm. um, so he does that stuff. I think he has the program. The difficulty is he can't use Warsaw's government program for his <laughs> private, personal. Yeah. yeah. So um, and to try and find a private uh, company to be able to do that for um, for him is something he's working through to try and get that done. So it's not an issue of knowledge. It's an issue of access to that system. So we work with Aaron on projects that we have in Warsaw. So we have a relationship with him there. So. I'll reach out to him too and kind of push on. And I've been in touch with him in terms of um, spec ma manuals and those types of things that we have to have for bidding. So we're well, we're in communication on the project. So I'll push on him some more to try and get. I even asked our in house engineer if there was a way to get a system so that we could do that in house. Um, and he hadn't necessarily been all that successful being able to track something down. So we'll go through it and uh, we'll figure something out to be able to get that answer in because uh, I can kind of agree with that. And then we'll know. And then I could think that would pull that liability statement off of the plans to say, is it, if eight's enough, then there's no reason for any liability question. If it's 10 and it's 10, um, you know, from the developer standpoint, eight inch pipes cheaper than 10 inch pipe. So sure. there's some benefit. Yeah, we're going to insist on that liability statement. Yeah, being pulled off yeah, the plan right. based upon that thing. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> that answer will help either way. No, no pipe has to be in that. Absolutely. One question I had was in terms of the design, I know a big question was capacity. So when you say it's functional, does it mean that the, the wastewater has the capacity to be able to handle all of the development without concern? Uh, I did not. Um, well, that again, I haven't seen calculations based upon what the proposed flow would be or demand on the system. Um, I simply looked at it from a will it flow from point A to point B um capacity wise um again that would be up to you guys and i haven't seen those calculations i've seen hey this is what we expect but there's been no hey we've got you know 400,000 gallons a day peak and the pipe will carry this i haven't seen a typical design calc the only calculations i've seen is drawdown testing on uh, the lift station that is downstream this will run into um, and it appears that that is adequate to handle the flow today. And that's based on the Indiana, the, the IDEM numbers for the units, right? And the, I saw calculations, estimates based upon full occupancy of 300 units going into that lift, going into the way station. Is that correct? I remember yeah. seeing those numbers, Tom. Okay. And they all calculated to be favorable, favorable because I think we calculated with anywhere between 16 and 20 percent, depending on the time of year. July is much different, yeah. which we have capacity for in our wastewater. So, OK, and that's good on um, the storm questions. Um, so when you talk about the emergency overflow, I guess that's not the term you use, but that, that's, that's actually correct. Okay. Yeah. So emergency overflow uh, and the directional pushing of water so it doesn't end up in certain spots. Um, Chris, have you talked about, or can you kind of elaborate on our? Yeah, for the on the detention basin, it's kind of in the inside heel, it was kind of taped in the backwards of L. In other words, an outflow pipe. Mm -hmm. You know, the the overflow is kind of over the top of that overflow pipe. I don't think it come out real distinct even the, on the drawing. Okay, for the the weir there. So Chris, like, may we get your, your name and address and who you're with? Sure. Chris McCray with John Kimball. Thank you. Address is 902 South 325 East. Thank you. And Chris, do you think here is, is it? You might be able to come to the plans and see here. Is this in the heel what you're talking about? Is it, so this is a so right, internal. Yeah, so right here is the overflow structure. That's to the west to the to of the weir is right here. So this overflow and I, I okay. yes, sir. <laughs> and so we talked about how some of the overflow could like interior of the site would come here and then go down the road and then come here. And then this was going to be the weir overflow right here over the top of the pipe. And but we can get I can get you a roll up detail saying that to you. 
come to us. Yeah, that's the one I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah I'm right here. I, I guess it goes into that. And it yeah, goes what I see is you. We, yeah, I need to see yeah. some more detail on this because okay. I just can't. Yes. I can't tell what the contouring is doing right here. This may be adequate. I don't know. Okay. Um, has there been any calculations to, um, you know, when you and I talked on the phone about the yeah. critical storm? Um, and I would agree with the comment you put in the uh, oh, uh, hydraulic summer sheet. Yeah, yeah the SDS. Yeah. Yeah. But the critical storm, basically, what is great about that is it tells you how much flow, how fast you're going to see at that at that big storm. Mm -hmm. And then you can size the width of this weir. That's what the point of it was. Oh, it wasn't so much to say, hey, your detention's inadequate. It was, how big does this weir need to be? Okay. Because it doesn't need to be 25 feet wide, does it okay, need so to be 30 feet wide? That kind of okay, so for the for the maximum C, CFS, you want to see a detail of okay, what's mm -hmm. going to be flowing through this weir during the hundred year event, if 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 this gets clogged. Um, Is that what you're looking sort for? Sort of. So okay, in the hundred year event, yeah. that weir should never come into play. Your detention is sized for the hundred year event. Correct. This is for yes, if that gets plugged, yeah. or we get that. Storm on Tuesday, storm on Wednesday, storm on Thursday, storm on Friday situation, which we all know happens. Yeah. Okay. And we're outside the design okay. of what you're what this is sized to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So it's that it's that emergency time that's outside your design. Okay. You know, the, the town can't stand in a position to say you have to capture every storm of all time. Right. Nor can they say you have to catch every storm that's piggybacked on each other. So this is just a method. So yes, in the hundred year storm that comes and goes, this is adequate, right? right? That's how you've designed it. Right. And I would agree with your calcs with the exception of the 16 100s raise and elevation from pre to post. But from an outflow standpoint, I think your your calculations are adequate. Um, but this emergency weir says, okay, in that bigger storm, can we make sure that this will hold it or direct it away from all of this development. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's what that's there for. Okay. And ideally, also, we do have an issue up here where we know this collects water. Now you're making the situation better here by taking this water and sending it this way. Yeah. So you're pulling it out of this watershed. Right. However, that bigger storm. That other that should. <laughs> what we don't want to do is no. if we flood this way and it ends up coming here. Right. We can't flood this area of town, or if the, a bigger one comes, how does this outlet so it doesn't go in and go that's, somewhere else? That's really the town's, and speaking with Bob and, and the town, that's where we really got to protect our family, correct? Yeah, that, that's you can make go, it or break it right there. You can, would you elaborate on, I mean, what we're worried about is our well systems there yep. and having that emergency relief. Your well system? Our well, our well water right there in the head of that. On that north side, right there where Davis. Okay. Oh, okay. That's so where wells are at. We've got to be ultra protective of that. We need a mechanism, emergency mechanism, built into back to the west of that uh -huh. to protect against any type of overflow. And I think what we had kind of talked about was this is kind of outside the design of the development to some degree. It's for the benefit of, but also you know putting in that overflow valve right here, Chris. We kind of talked about that. Something yep. that's not on our property but the the developer coming and helping to develop this system that flows into the manhole out here. i would say not only to the benefit of of but the impetus of i mean some of that emergency that emergency relief is necessary because some of the redesigning of the water system or the drainage system that is being done by the development well, not necessarily it. it's modifying it and and we need to be protective of that it is a simple mechanism it is yeah. the, we've talked about it we definitely have informally what we're looking for is something before planning commission if i'm correct bob we'd like to see it yeah, if we I can mean, there has to be a and, and, and I'm part, I'm sorry and, and part of this project there there hasn't been a hundred year uh flood elevation established for this low area Okay, so that was part of the request. I think the uh, DNR required. So that that yeah, hydraulic report that I sent you was kind of what that was about. Was we took this whole area, did some topography of 
through, but not all through the wetland area. We we shot some areas, but we also did some topography where you know we wouldn't get stuck and, and kind of go through and get a good lay of the land of what's kind of in the slow area. So we get a good area of what's high and what's low and what volume capacity that we would have. So then from that, I developed shed areas that would flow into the north. I call it the north wetlands or the property north of the development and then the wetlands on the development. So we did, I did the uh, rainfall events that would shed in there and these soils are kind of sandy, but I, I did it as basically clay or during the spring when things are frozen, you get a 100 year event. So basically kind of calculated worst case scenario of what water would flow into these uh, watersheds or this wetlands. And, and then, uh, did that before the development and then after the development because part like we are saying part of this is going to get redirected into this wetland and same, same scenario didn't, didn't we use the worst case scenario as far as soils so that we generate more water runoff to, to generate these volumes and so we looked at this as a conservative you know as possible um in order to generate maybe the worst case scenario for a rain event 100 year rain event and then we come up through the calculations and he and i have a disagreement of of this farm <laughs> and 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 so this generated our 100 year rain event would come through the wetlands here as well as fill up the detention basin during that event and it would not flow into the northern uh wetlands now could it flow through the soils most likely it probably does but Technically, we're, 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 we're helping this northern wetlands by taking that water into this wetlands. OK. So. As, as far as putting this drain or overflow kind of situation, is that a good safety valve? Yes, I think in any case that would be a good safety valve. But a, a lot of these soils is sandy and through the soil borings. That was my next question. Have you had it bored? Well, there were a lot of soil borings done. And all but three, when they're done, come up dry. So the water is dissipating away. I mean, um, I think in the report, I kind of stated mm -hmm. in there which ones. And, and one of them was over here. I think one or two were over here, kind of close to the lower. But the rest of these all come up dry. So obviously, the water is filtrating through the ground because of sand and finding whatever way it does either to these wet wetlands or down to the lake. You know, um, there it is is there an underground shelf somewhere? Probably. Do we know where it is? You don't know, no, but since you don't know where that is, is it a good idea to put this in as an emergency overflow if you get rain after rain? Yes, I think that would be a safety valve for anybody that's interested in here. Okay. Okay. As a as a wholly detached um, piece of infrastructure from the storm within the development, mm -hmm. could we do a separate site plan and analysis for that function? Because it's it's kind of like technically not within the development plan, right? So it's not connected to the storm and it's not on our property, really. So my thought is like in conjunction with you know kind of say put this on there, but make it you know, as a separate design plan so that it shows what it is, where it is, who on whose property it's going to go. And to some degree, does that make sense? It, to, to me, uh, I mean, this is this is protecting to people's interests, the interest of the developer and the, and the interest of the town, right? Correct. Yeah. So if if let's say I might be speaking out of turn <laughs> here, but let's say the developer puts this in now can can the town secure either the easements or whatever and the maintenance of this if this is to be done would be the question well the maintenance of it will automatically go to the town correct the, the maintenance would not be to you. yeah if you put it in a road we already had the right where we, we have, have a road. easement okay easement down that one piece of and we have the easement in the back of the we own the property we own the property back, back. so over. really it's just a design issue at this point of, of putting it into the plans it, it's Come on, feet of pie. I mean, yeah, so, I think it could be an addendum, <laughs> an addendum to this plan. It, traditionally, we wouldn't include in a plan 
development on some of those. And, and that's fine if it comes in the form of a addendum. What I'd like to see is to have it in, in drawing for the yeah. planning commission, is what I'm saying. Right. And it's just something that we're we've talked about and, and uh, we know we're being hypersensitive, but it's mm -hmm. it's in the best interest, as you said, of both parties involved. Yeah, I think it's responsible and it's it's showing due diligence. So if we could design something like that and yeah. it's cost effective. Let's get it in front of the planning. Yeah, and without that on there, the planning commission could move forward without that information being documented. So, yeah, okay. Well, and I, that's good to know. What I would say for the planning commission is, well, it'll be attached to, but not necessarily on this storm plan. We'll have all, it's the same calculations, but for that one branch. Just because of those reasons that it's technically not on our property, not attached to the the storm sewer for well, you own the property adjoining that, so you could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, Scott, right. do you have any comment on that? Anything I, don't, I guess I don't understand how this piece of storm pipe is any different than the sanitary sewer or the water main that's on Main Street. That's running down the easement down Main. I was thinking. I mean, it's I, very similar in the sense. I think it's it's tied in. Because if we weren't talking about this development, we wouldn't be talking about putting a pipe in. So exactly. in my mind, I, I don't see how it's just because it's not connected to the network, how it's any different. It's not to the benefit of, but because of. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I guess I'm not following an addendum piece when it's, we're talking. And, and I, my envisionment is not that it comes up, the pipe doesn't come up to here. The way this is graded. This may flow back to this corner, and then there's a culvert set in well, this corner. Those two structures that you're pointing at now flow towards the well, so that needs to go all the way to the center yeah. of that right there. Yeah. There's a that's there's where a that, storm sewer right here on Davis. That's where you need right now. So just it, it's it's just here. It's yeah, not that way could, back up into here. It's just right here. Yeah, yeah, that could absolutely be on there. What yeah, I was thinking was they wanted it on a separate parcel. Oh, no, I don't think so. No. So right down here in this low land. Yeah, area, so you're just catching that. that you know where our water plant is, right? Yeah. If you go behind it, yep, right there. Well, that's not this corner though. Well, it's it's right on the right. It's right, right, it's right there. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about what? Maybe yeah, back to the north. Feet. You're running a lateral. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, if you ran on to yeah. this parcel oh, over, it ain't oh, there. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why I mean we could put it on there for sure. That elevation is set though so that normal, you know, you've got an elevation for that post developed um, area. Mm -hmm. That elevation can be set at that or just above, so it never really takes water. Yeah, hopefully, it's still right forever. Right, <laughs> but it's just there as a stopgap. If, if in the event that you get the bigger one, it it gives it an outlet. Yeah. Because right now there's really no outlet for that northern area. It's just got to keep collecting mm -hmm. until it goes somewhere you don't. I get it. calls from the several parcels north of the water plant every summer about it's getting real close to my land. So I, I know it's going to happen. Yeah, and, and to me, like, well, hopefully we did topography with wide August. and you know we have some water elevations that were shot here, you know, at a kind of. Yeah, medium water level. I, I don't think we want to go any lower than a certain or any mm -hmm. higher. In other words, we want to try to keep a stable to sustain whatever life needs it to be at a certain elevation. Does that make yeah, sense? I don't want to drain it. I just want right. to make right. sure it doesn't. Right. <laughs> just to be that that stopgap for that. Yeah. High agree. water because you are going to make. Let's be honest. No matter what you do, as soon as you put something in and you develop. The patterns are going to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, best intentions, and that's what we're trying to do here. But you want to make sure that you're, like you said, you don't want to drain it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't want to flood it either. Exactly. Stabilize. A couple structures and pipe. It's easy. Thing. It really helps. I, yeah, I don't see a reason not to okay. you know, to object to that at all. My only question was on what land was it located? But sure. seeing that now makes perfect sense to be able to put it in like that, and we can. I'd want to see it on those plants so the sheet yeah. doesn't fall on the floor. Right. Yeah. I think to get it on there and add it in and get those calculations as part of the final submission. Um, and then also check on that 1600s, you know, see if we can figure that out to make sure that that, you know, passes the muster. Um, and, and it might have been that I just, that I'm not following the report 
Okay. But, you know, I was trying to do it and I was like, okay, here's where we're at. And with the changing of watersheds, it, there, it gets a little bit confusing. There's a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Lot of so, there. Um, I will say also on this storm pipe we're talking about on this northeast corner, that is within um, wellhead protection areas. So it, it'll have to be a pressure rated pipe. So it can't just be an SDR 35. It'll have to be like SDR 21 or 21 some, minimum. something that is pressure rated. Mm -hmm. So, okay. The engineer is not that. Means. You know, Kirk <laughs> is not your head. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> I look, I look, at, look at Scott and Bob. And I, <laughs> yeah, okay. Just well, I want it part of the project. I don't yeah. want to see a, yeah. a separate. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's for my purposes and maybe the audience wise, what what we've gone over from the town perspective in terms of what you presented today is and our recommendation from Scott, <clears throat> IAC 327, the manhole shift is something that's going to have to happen. It's in your best interest to get through IDEM. You have Scott's sanitary report with some of the things he didn't enumerate there, they are some, but mainly minor shifts and changes. And it's in, and as he states in the report, it's in your best interest for item yep. in a smooth process. So it's something that we expect that you'll change. It'll we, lower your comments. It will. Yeah. And I expect, you know, expect when you guys come to planning, those will be incorporated into yep. the changes. If you would, please. The, in terms of water, what we're hearing is we would like the calculations and we want some numbers based upon eight or 10. We know you, history tells you six fine is out of the question, but we want to see eight or 10 and we want calculations that back that and can justify the uses of it because we have concerns for the overall town pressure. The other thing we'd like you to do is to remove that comment, which will will happen. Um, the stores connections not necessary on the fire hydrants. And that's that's an easy fix uh, storm we've gone over. But we do want to see drawings for that emergency relief. Um, you're going to look at the elevation uh, and see where that problem's coming from. I'm going to stop you. And, and, yeah. on, the, on the stores connections, yeah. you said not an issue? Yeah, that according to Bob, not an know. issue. <clears throat> That'd be the only hydrogen town to have. Um, so we want we would like to see a design on that emergency relief on the north side. And, and of course, too, we'll get to Scott the closer we're blowing up view of that uh, the, uh, the weir. of the weir on the west side yeah please so a couple other things i noted so we do or do not have the calcs for demand on the water treatment including peak usage peak times okay i don't know do we have that development of demand has been completed um verification of pipe size has not at least that i have seen that's on the eight to ten is what you're talking about. On the sanitary. Sanitary. Oh, sanitary. Mm -hmm. okay. Bob, you got anything on that? That's an addition. Sounds pretty important to me. Yeah. Sounds really important. Yep. Appreciate it. I want water going both ways. Yeah. Based on the state. So do we need to add anything on that for the capacity? Is that what you're talking about on the sewer that you want to see from us Bob. or sewer is your math got to be cleaned up for those manhole distances for your elevation elevation that's something that's in the recommendation and yeah. the report then I, I can explain to you what i mean yeah on um, essentially when you look at your invert elevation from structure to structure and then you look at length and slope the math has to be there, or IDEM historically has kicked it back and said, These, this math doesn't add up. And this is for the NDPES permit? No, this would be for the yeah, IDEM, IDEM. Uh, instruction application. Which had it happened before permit. Yeah. I ran them yesterday and they, they weren't. Um, the, let me find the exact comment. Um, yeah, I remember seeing it. They did match from playing the pro. They did match from playing the profile, which was an issue in February. So those matched up. Um, 
that guy. We'll cover that at the end. Hello. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Confirm elevations with slope and length of proposed sanitary piping. Calculations of elevations using proposed lengths and slopes are not consistent in all locations, was the comment. As opposed to listing all of them, it was just kind of a check. Mm -hmm. um, I did check back the, the elevations that are listed in plan do match what's in profile, but when you do the map out, you're the it's close, but it's off a little bit from what's published on there. And I still think it's yeah, adequate, but so the, I'm trying to look at the identical yeah. item combo for you. Yeah. Because if the, or you, or you, they'll leave you a little bit quicker than you speak with yourself. I had another note. What was all needed for the uh, item than the NDPES permit? Is there anything else for that? Is that, do we have, or does the developer have everything in place? Don't believe there's PDES permit implications or it's just a standard okay. extension. Okay. <clears throat> Can you it's hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Chester, did you have a question? Yeah, finally got into the system here. Uh, I got a couple of questions. You probably already covered them, but just wondered with the full capacity of of uh, uh, the project, will the water pressure be enough uh, to sustain fire protection. So that's another calculation we're waiting on. Is that what I hear? Oh, okay. Water capacity, sustained fire protection. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, and of course, to provide water pressure for the town, you know, on a normal basis. Covered that. That one was covered. It's covered, okay. And uh, the uh, the runoff from the <clears throat> project, I couldn't hear too well. The uh, uh, will that affect the quality of water coming out of our well system, which is right next door? It's covered. That was that was discussed. I must have missed that. It's, we're, we discussed it, Chester, while we were discussing the emergency runoff uh, system that we're going to put oh, into play okay. up there. All right. But thank you for the question. So it's good, huh? We're oh, going to we make it better. Know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Was this question about water quality? Or water quantity. So. Well, water quality, and that stems around from protecting the well. I think, don't you, Scott? I mean, in Depends essence, on, is the question rooted in will this stormwater runoff impact what's coming in through the well that you're then putting in your distribution system, or is it what's the runoff water quality? There's two. There's two different questions that are considered there. One yeah. is. Well, how does it impact the potable water system or how does it affect you know runoff going to wherever it's going to go mm -hmm. from a surface type of situation mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. clarification on the question might be warranted okay you want to go ahead chester yes yeah uh just a clarification on that last question about the water quality could you be specific on what you're asking there well the runoff from the from the project <clears throat> Since there's going to be uh, streets and sewers and everything, uh, will that be running down to our well system, which is right next door in a lower area? Well, how is how will that affect the uh, the the quality safety quality of the water? Should be it's treated before sent out so it should be fine but i'll let scott add to that but i'll i'll defer to anyway the chris on this one <laughs> well it depends on okay elevation on your or your well that is right or or we're going to set this overflow pipe so that the water doesn't reach that depending on how your well was set and how it was sealed you know I can get that information for you what the elevation of the, okay. the floor is too. 
it's in the plant, it. so it's if it gets in the back door, it's going in there. So right, and, yeah. and that's why we're talking it's about the relief system. Right. Yeah, that's right. We're we're putting in all mechanisms to make sure that that water doesn't get high enough to get up in that head. No, as but will it affect our aquifer? Well, I'm not sure where your aquifer is fed from. You know, I'll end up in tight end would have that information or not. You know, it flows I'm from sure. the northwest is where our aquifer comes from. Okay, so it's coming in this away from the old your south. It's coming in from back over towards Jefferson in that area in that north <laughs> right, So, so it, if we don't affect water getting up around the well, it could possibly seep down the well. You know that would be our concern. Okay. Question. Okay. Well, my only other question on this is. As far as bringing this for tank mission, have you got enough time to make the changes to your map and get the information you need for you? Hopefully, that happens before the uh, group session. Okay. We're, yeah, we're, we're sitting next on Tuesday. Tuesday. We're sitting next Tuesday for a work session. You're setting 19th of March for the planning, 6 30. So, well, I'd like to see it before. I would like to see it during the work session, ideally. And that a little caveat to this is that. In order to send it to IDEM on the sanitary stuff, right? Mr. Porter needs to sign off on it. So the sooner that you get that cleaned up, cleaned up and ready to go, the sooner he puts his John Hancock on it and he can send it down to the state. So it, again, for efficiency's sake, it's a good idea maybe to prioritize that sanitary and get the signature on it. And I think that um, for us, probably the longest, the the most difficult portion of this is probably those calculations because of the programming issues. So I'll get with Aaron, you know, right after this, but I think these guys can run through all those other requests pretty quickly and get that stuff on there, but making sure that we can run those calculations on the eight to 10 um, number. And I guess the town, the, the town wants to know the number. They're not necessarily only concerned about the liability question. Okay, because it's, I mean, if, if my client said, look, it's fine, take the liability thing off and just use eight. That we like to know what it's based on. We don't want it just to be a feeling or a historical thing. We want the actual calculation. Yeah, could. Yeah. We don't want to leave the people in the new housing development undersized and we do not want to oversize it and then have a depletion out on town. Yeah, we want right size. Makes yeah, sense. Have either for the work session. Yeah. And for the planning commission as well. So I agree. And I know you were talking about having trouble getting to wherever you can get those calculations. And I was just worried time wise, is that going to. Well, as you know, this uh, uh, time uh, being short that often gets things done. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, exactly. the, the, maybe that's a little motivation. <laughs> yeah, guy, so. I had a professor compare us to a uh, rat in a corner, he usually <laughs> finds the cheese faster. Um, appreciate that thought, Burke. Um, so let's we'll make sure that that gets to the engineers and everybody. That yeah, it's not a it's not a problem for next week. Uh, yeah. It's a problem for this week. So I, I have a question. Also, is this going to create, or is there any potential to create any additional flooding or water issues to the property directly to the west? That's a big to the west. To the west. So you looked at the field between this development and 17. and 17. Right. Owned by the cabinet. That strip back there, it's sits behind west of the wetlands there, Steve, is what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Pardon? I don't have the topo with me. But there's, there's not, I, I, I think it's a bridge that runs. On the, yeah. There is, it's going to shift to the south. Yeah. yeah. That's going to move southward, but yeah, that's, I don't think. I guess I want to make sure we're protecting all the neighbors as well. Yeah. Right. So that based upon the topography, we're thinking we get more of their water than our water goes to them. Mm -hmm. Is that right? We, we don't have, but there's a very small section on the west side that might be 10 or 15 feet wide that might flow a little bit out on the back side of that houses. So it's all going to be grass anyway that's flowing that way. You, you might have a little bit increase in shed from the roofs of the houses. But very, very little. Aren't you capturing some of that too in that shed? 
going well, back we're kept, yeah we're yeah some of that's getting redirected back exactly that's the norm yeah so. okay so that we would think post development there's there's may still be water run out there but no more than is pre-development and maybe less than pre-development yeah okay this guy yeah. i have one more question and bring up just because a lot of the food input i've had as far as has there ever been anything looked at as far as access from 17 to this project? I mean, we're looking at traffic flow increasing tremendously on Maine, Ohio, back to South Maine. And I know we've only got two ways in, you know, and that's from the south and from the north. Right. Yeah. I mean, in terms of there's never been a discussion with the company that owns that other, you know, the cabinet company that owns the lot to the west uh, to make straight access out to 17. We have kind of been considering something like that. We're concerned more that you would be drawing non residential traffic into the development, which would increase speeds and increase other concerns inside the development. Um, we've never, my clients never completed a project where you had pass through traffic. Um, like that, I think there's so there's a lot of negatives to something like that for the residents of the development. Um, I think that the traffic study that we saw had less of an effect of traffic on Main Street than maybe in, you know, intuitively would think. Um, but I haven't seen necessarily that uh, exact number come out, but it was very minimal. Um, at every development we have, everybody's concerned about the traffic and how much traffic it's going to generate. And that never comes to fruition. Um, that was exactly what we had at Centennial. They said, oh, this traffic's going to be terrible. You can drive out there and you'll know, hardly, I mean, at 8.15 in the morning, you may pass somebody 7.30, but for the most part, there's no traffic jam. There's no light. There's no, every, well, everything flows fine. Um, how many homes are in Centennial? How many, how many doors? total of 275 units, I think, right around there. So 270, 275. One of the things that we, you've got access to. 31 actually from that road, both ways from town and from 31. Well, they have to come through the yeah, so they would have to they would have to turn left out on the 31 south, right? Um, and then also to come the other way. What I was saying is at the intersection of the development that leads from the development to the town's roads, um, we don't see a bunch of traffic. I mean, there's contemplation uh, actually. Uh, Sean's here. He was the town attorney at the time, and that there was contemplation of putting in a street light at the entrance, just based upon congestion, and that's not need been brought up again yeah, because of based upon here. So, well, yeah. um, I know with two accesses anywhere. I mean, I know you still see quite a bit of traffic coming in, which doesn't really impend anything as far as traffic goes coming off 31, and you're going to have naturally coming from continue in town for what they do. Right. 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 But you don't have both combined. In other words, somebody just coming in, everybody coming in, whether it be coming from Walmart or <laughs> it's cool. So, yeah. The centennial, you know, you don't everybody can be coming right there to paper or whatever is going to be out, but you're coming right to pay out your CDF or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so on the on the side of connecting directly to 17 ownership the cost of uh purchasing land oh you know not owning the land it, it wasn't really thought of as part of the development and and thinking of it afterwards and after design the negatives were a real concern in trying to put something like that in mm -hmm. is it in phase two of the development or phase three and four of the residential development portions is it possible to put that in on that south road? It is possible. It seems highly unlikely, um, you know, but not from the standpoint of you lose a unit or two, but from the standpoint of concern of traffic coming through there, um, you know, it's a residential development, people just using it as a means to get to 17. Um, that's not what the road widths are designed for. It's not what the design and the development is for. It's so it seems to be. While it seems logical that you could do that, if there's a lot of negatives to trying to do something like that, too. Yeah. What negatives on your part? I'm just kind of better positive for you and the town. I like being through the town and it's look, not just for the development itself, but 
I think there's a lot of benefits to the town. I, mean, I see a lot of benefits to where we want to put in development. Yeah, one way there, there is, and so. the one thing that we've discussed, and 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 we've ongoing discussion with phase three and four, is that one of the things that Maycog made clear, and a lot of the traffic studies are the problem with this is their estimates, and unlike other estimates, what we don't have is a defined client base yet that's living out there. We're 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 still trying to determine how many full time and what the traffic's going to look like. So ongoing studies, estimates are great, but the ongoing studies I think are going to be necessary to address that question. And then that's going to provide us the data to make decisions for the town and requests that maybe down the line. But so you're talking about probably between the phases. Absolutely. So when we get phase one and two, and we're going to have a base out there to be able to do actual traffic studies on and pick up actual traffic flow during the different months. Again, I need to look at July too. So we need them online for a full year of traffic pattern, so right? Is, so do we build a road for one year, one month of worth of traffic, or do we have a five month? you know, traffic new additional issue. So we need to determine new volume based upon the development is what I'm saying. And, and but that's something yeah. we have to keep in mind and keep moving yeah. forward with. And yeah. that was an open question, not just yeah. yes or no for the yep. whole thing, but I, I, it's something that I would like to keep in mind for as well. Yeah. Yep. And, and usually, I mean, we're, we're fine looking at the, I mean, we're happy to see the numbers too. And because we've always seen a positive response mm -hmm. um, to development from that, uh, but in terms of there's a lot of hurdles in putting in a road across someone else's property. You know, that we don't right. have that would be the gaps works too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, you have to be sensitive to the wetland yeah. that's out there as well. So, all right. So, are there any more water questions <laughs> coming in or going out right now? I, I, I'd like, I have a question. Maybe generate some more. So the structures within within this um, development. I recall distance between the structures is 16 feet, or is that just between the houses? Or what's the distance between multifamily structures? Uh, they sometimes vary. I don't think there's any that's less than 18 feet between foundations. So if we look some 20, 20, so 16, 16 feet, 18 feet, 20. 18, 23, 19. Because the eaves go by the eaves on foundation. Yeah. So 20 in the areas where it's 18, yeah, between the eaves would be 16. Uh, but it's, it's that's going to be a narrow sense, 16 between. I'm looking at, yeah, that's what I saw. The, uh, yeah. Just want to confirm that so that we do have access. We need something for, for utilities. Yeah. We're good there. Yeah, I didn't see anything less than 16. But. Yeah, there's some that are here in these corners that are like 17. That's between garages. Oh, 15. Yeah. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 feet. As far as between the houses? Yeah. yeah. That's more of a steep question. Than... No, I just <laughs> want to make sure you, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I from my perspective, I just want to make sure. There's, there's, there's one skinny section through there. The unit will be less than 20. No, he's a bit. Oh, he's I'm bit. talking about yeah. okay. for utility. It's skinnier in that one corner. Oh, we talked about that. We talked about it. I'm fine with that. Okay. So, yeah, and then for reference, I mean, 18 feet is between a lot of the single or the, you know, the condominiums. 18 feet is uh, at or a little bit more than uh, Maple Ridge. So, uh, as far as, uh, yeah. you know, uh, units and there's a very comparative too, but yeah, like the reading thing of PUD, so having the different restrictions. So can I add one more note then? Yeah. Having talked to an employee of the post office, some of the street names could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, and it's of, ultimately, since our ordinance and, and statute says that the plan commission can is responsible for naming the streets, uh, we have to leave that all to, I can't speak for them, but I'm sure when you have Employee told me was Sandy Harbor, Sandy Park, Sandy Pine. Those could be a little bit of a nightmare for the post office yeah. when they deliver mail and having addresses. Yeah. So from from the break out of the Sandy. Yeah. yeah. If there's a way to get some better names, I'm sure Dante if they were Harbor, proposed. Dante Harbor. Road. Yeah. I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe Bean Boulevard, <laughs> Porter <laughs> Parkway. Porter Pine. Again, well, again, trying to. Trying to consider all parties on yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The place There's older. a lot of sand either. So yeah. Yeah. Go back. I do like the Out of Glory Red Sand. So those are really glory. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I have a question for a town attorney. With the technical review committee, can we we have choices to approve moving this forward or advising the plan commission on this um, favorably, unfavorably, or not taking any action? Is that correct? Our choices. Can we approve with conditions as a TRC? I know like the plan commission can do that. Can the TRC do that? I think so. I mean, ultimately it's the plan commission that takes action and you're just like the technical. We're, ad we're advisory. We just to review it. By yeah, it's just sending comments along to them, I think is fine. Yeah. Okay. Any concerns be forwarded? Asking Culver Equities parties that are representative here today, are there any questions or clarification needed for the town's position that's been enumerated over the course of this meeting? No, what I understood is uh, the list that Mr. Gorski ran down, if we can get all or um, all of those settled by next Tuesday for your workshop, uh, we'll do our best to get that done within our ability. So can we can we spell those that list out one more time so we have I, it on the record? Well, for what, how about you tell me what you heard? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, what I heard is uh, adjusting some of the manhole uh, covers to you know, infer with Scott's suggestions. Um, Implement the suggestions from Scott on this list, the numbers for the eight to 10 inch pipe, uh, remove the liability um, clause, uh, remove the storage capacity of deals on the hydrants, um, add overflow in the northeast corner, um, show the blow up of our weird, weird uh, process for Scott to review um, and get fire hydrant water pressure numbers uh, to verify that we have pressure for the for the fire hydrants. Um, one of those is kind of a blanket employ the suggestions from Scott in that analysis that he provided. Whether they sanitary or doing like that. Yeah. 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 So the calculation that you need to. What? Yeah, people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was kind of a blanket mm -hmm. cover of, of the things from Scott. So that's what I understand we need to get done before that workshop next Tuesday. Anything missing? No. I think that's it. No, that was, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So well, I have no further questions regarding the site plan review. Was there an analysis I did? Was there an analysis that you sent to the town that has not been sent to us yet? As I understood at the beginning, and you correct. asked for yes, their I permission agree. to release. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of the one that I'm thinking we'll have. I can, the, I can with their permission, I'll pull yeah. that. Yes, please. Afternoon. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. That would because that's kind of the list I'm going to be looking at to make sure that. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, on the only thing I have issued is sanitary. I have not issued a water or a storm uh, formal recommendation. Okay. But, and we have some of those others covered without that. So, right. So, but we need that map cleaned up. So, right. Yeah. The 400 feet needs, the manholes need to be less than 400 feet. Yeah. Make your elevation on the plan, which are part of that, yeah. that recommendation. Yeah. And then I'll sign the sanitary, sir. There you go. I'll make a motion with the conditional approval of the TRC recommendation with the suggested uh, changes uh, prior to the planning commission or, or bringing into the work session. Work session. Work session too. Thank you. Work session uh, next Tuesday, which would be anybody got a date on? 12. Thank you, sir. 312. Um, I make that motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Conditionally. Conditionally. <laughs> for us to give a favorable recommendation to the plan commission for case 2024 P-04, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Motion carries to favorably approve to the plan commission with the conditions listed. That's not um, well, the conditions are out there. Yeah. So we understand what we need to do to move forward right. Right. from the town from the town. Yeah. Hey. Nine. Yep. <laughs> it makes it real. Other business for the TRC. 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Third, fourth. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings closed. Thanks, sir. <clears throat>